Good afternoon, everyone. It's P. Moody. Um, today's message is under the influence, seducing spirits. So let's just pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, so I just wrote down a couple of things. But first, um, in regards to the seducing spirits, so they can come through television, um, movies, people you're around, even sermons. You have to be careful who you're sitting under as far as um, who's your pastor or shepherd, overseer, whatever you want to call it, at the house of worship where you go. Because it says in the end times that false teachers and preachers will come. And they are ravenous wolves that are wrapped in sheep's clothing. So they look innocent. They look holy. But really, they're coming to just distort the teaching of God. And some will follow uh, seducing spirits and be turned away from the faith. They'll follow because they want what's pleasing to their own uh, flesh. So let's look at... Um, and also, um, activity can come from that. One of the things is um, horror movies. I was watching the um, E! Channel, and they had the E! True Hollywood story, and they were talking about our horror movies curse, and that a lot of people who are making these movies that we see, um, paranormal activity, I guess, if you will, um, was happening. People were dying. Different things were taking place. People waking up three in the morning. Just different things that people were experiencing. Some people died the way they um, actually acted as. Like whatever it was, if somebody got their head severed, a lady got her head severed in real life, and she was playing that role. Um, another guy. It was I think he said that um, something happened where he fell over. He fell over a balcony or something. And um, or rocks or something. He fell over something. It was a cliff or something. And the same way it was in the movie was exactly what happened to him. So it can show that it opens a gateway up for evil. That's why I don't even go. My husband and I, we do not go watch horror movies. We don't watch it in the house. No paranormal stuff. We don't watch none of that stuff because we know that it can enter a house. I used to be at my um, mother-in-law's house and we would be watching some of them shows even watched a um one show where they had these three guys on there it was really funny but they were doing paranormal activity but we would notice like then something would just fall over and we like what the heck was that like you would have to push it for it to fall over but it just fell we just seen a lot of activity in the house my mother-in-law be like she seen somebody standing in the, like a shadow standing in the door like it was crazy stuff so Needless to say, we don't watch that. We don't entertain that. And living in our home, we just don't even permit that period. None of it. Because we're like, we're not having that. We pray in here too much and we cast things out. But we are not letting nothing in that is not of God. We're not doing that. Um, let's look at some verses. 1 Timothy 4.1. And it reads, now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. So as I stated, you must be careful um, who you're sitting under because you have to test every spirit. That's what the Bible says. You test every spirit. So you make sure what comes from God and what isn't. And you'll know what's from God and what's not. And that's why it's important to read your bible for yourself don't let somebody else tell you what's in it read it so that you know what's in it in case somebody tries to alter it for their own selfish reasons you'll know what it says exactly and god says don't add to his word nor take away from it so you'll know if something is added or taken away from the next one is second timothy 4 3 so let's go to second timothy 4 and 3 and it reads, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. We all know that I've experienced that. My husband experienced that where you go to somewhere where if they don't want a teaching that's going to pierce and penetrate and convict their heart. They want something that's going to make them feel like, oh, you're justified in what you did or what you said or how you live or something that will get them by, like a quick fix, just for the moment. Oh, just get me through 
for these next couple of days until I come back next Sunday. And then we're going to do this all over again. But no, you want a true and wholesome teaching that's going to pierce and penetrate your soul. The word it says is sharper than a double-edged sword pierces through bone and marrow. It's that powerful. It's that effective. So you want it to correct your heart. Anything God does when he corrects us is because he loves us. He wants us to grow. He wants us to be what he has called us to be, not what we currently are. He wants us to grow. He doesn't want our growth to be stunted. Some people, they don't mind being where they're at. They just are complacent, but you pray for those people. You don't talk about them. You pray for those people and for their growth and wherever their walk is, they'll get there. Prayerfully, they'll get there. Some do, some don't, but you just pray for them. Let's go to Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6 and 12. And it reads, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So when people do stuff sometimes, we think automatically it's the person. No, it's the spirit. The enemy's always working. He could come through whoever. He knows what to do to push your buttons, what to get you upset, get you riled up and ruffle your feathers. Don't let it be unbothered. That's what I do for the most part. I'm unbothered. So if somebody is being cruel to you, if they don't like you, if they do something rude, ignore it. You go home, you pray for that person. And let God deal with that. But don't take it upon yourself or amongst yourself to take it into your own hands. Vengeance is the Lord's. He will repay. Um, the enemy just wants to get you outside of the will of God. So he wants you to react and do something that he know would be not pleasing in God's sight. Seducing spirit. Um, also, let's say, for example, if you're listening to a song, you might listen to um, like an R&B song and it's talking about love making us something but it really ain't love because half of those people ain't even married to each other so it's not love it's lust then you start feeling lustful having lustful thoughts or if you watch a movie let's say where they boxing or they fighting or something next thing you know you come out of the movie theater you feeling like you could take on anybody because it's a spirit attached to these movies to these things when you listen to the music whatever mood the person was in when they made that song now it's transferring it's coming into you. Now you start feeling the way they feel. And they, you're like, oh, I can relate. Yeah, it's not a relate. It's the spirit coming in. It's the doorway. It's open and stuff. So just be mindful of um, that. Um, what else? Uh, I was also going to say people. You might be around somebody and they just have the worst attitude. And you go there, you're feeling great. You're feeling good. And then you come out start complaining and just different things you wasn't doing before. You have to be careful and aware of the company that you keep. Bad company corrupts good morals. I've seen a lot of people in my life who were once humble and, and just kind people. And they just, the people that they came together with or married or whatever the case may be, it just changed them. And it was just like, who on earth is this person? Like you just didn't recognize them because they were around that person so long. It's like they took on their spirit. They took on their character and their ways. And especially if you're married, when you're joined together, you become one. So they really literally became like those individuals or people. So you want to make sure that you got a good support system, a good group of um, people around you that are of the Lord, that are uplifting, that are positive. And those that aren't, aren't if they're coming into what they want to know, then welcome them. Don't turn nobody away. But be careful. You can't let everybody in your circle. You can't be friends with any and everybody because sometimes you'll let the enemy in not knowing and then it just wreak havoc over your whole life. So be careful and just use your discernment and pray to the Lord and ask him, you know, who to let in and who not and close the door uh, for those that he does not want in your life and then accept it for what it is. I hope that this blesses you all. God bless you. P. Moody. Have a great day.